Special edition of PFTPM on this Wednesday. I was thinking about doing one this afternoon. Now I don't need to because we got something to talk about. And this dovetails with one of the topics from Wednesday morning's PFT Live. If you were watching or listening, and thank you if you were. Shame on you if you weren't. If you were listening, you saw a conversation about Stefan Diggs. And the reality was, to all those of you out there who might have dragged me in the past, I'm not mad. I don't hold grudges, except when I do. You might have given me a hard time for trying to read between the lines and discern whether or not Stephon Diggs wanted to stay in Buffalo, whether or not the Bills wanted him to stay in Buffalo. It was on March 15th that he tweeted, ready for whatever. Well, that was two days before his salary for 2024 was due to become fully guaranteed at $18.55 million. He wasn't cut. He wasn't traded then. I thought that the Bills would try to hold him until after June 1. I thought that was the day to watch because by trading him now, dead cap charge, $31 million for 2024. They could have carved that down to $8 million and change for this season and deferred the rest of it to next year. Instead, they're taking it all now. Now, look, it's easy to create cap space. Rob Peter to pay Paul, move money around. They were taking 31 over the next two years anyway. Whether it's eight and change and the balance next year or all of it now, they'll deal with it. Because presumably the Houston Texans, the new destination for Stephon Diggs, they want him now. And they want him off-season program. They want to get him ready to go with C.J. Stroud and the other weapons they have, including Nico Collins, Noah Brown, John Mechie, Tank Dell, Joe Mixon, acquired via trade with the Cincinnati Bengals and given a new contract. $18.55 million for, jo- uh, for Stephon Diggs this year. That's the next question, though, and it's one of the various questions I'll ponder over the next several minutes. Will he want a new deal? Let's let's go there since I'm in that neighborhood. Will he want a new contract? Will he want to have an adjustment to his salary or will he wait? When he arrived in Buffalo, he waited. Even though his contract wasn't spectacular at the time, he didn't jostle right away. They eventually adjusted his deal. Will he want a new deal now? And the Texans need to know these things because just like with a franchise quarterback, I don't think you trade for Stephon Diggs unless you know Stephon Diggs wants to go to Houston. I think it would be reckless, malpractice to trade for Diggs without getting a thumbs up emoji from Stephon Diggs because he has shown in the past what he's willing to do if he doesn't want to be somewhere. The day Kirk Cousins got an extension in 2020, coincidentally or not, was the day he tweeted his way out of Minnesota and landed in Buffalo. And we felt this coming. See, this is where I go back to our effort to try to project where the ball is moving. It gets derided. Even though we know better, we've seen over the year the crazy things that happen. So we try to foresee what might happen next. And this wasn't some kooky off the wall thing that we got lucky with. This wasn't even pushing the envelope that hard. We know the history. We know that Savon Diggs, when unhappy in the past, has done what he's had to do to get out. We know he's been unhappy in Buffalo. We know that weird thing happened last June where he's there for the mandatory minicamp. They create the impression he walked out the door. And then it's like, oh, wait, well, he walked out the door because we we told him to leave. He didn't just up and leave. He left because we told him to because there was some sort of an argument that happened. So this has been percolating. So you can either sit back and just wait to see what happens Or you can try to understand where the hot spots are, where things might go down. And, you know, some people out there want to say we're engaging in fan fiction by trying to project what's going to happen next. I don't give a shit because this is what we do. And this is an example of why we do it, because sometimes it happens. Because there was enough there to look at the situation and say something's not right here. When Joe Brady takes over as offensive coordinator for Ken Dorsey, who was fired after that debacle on a Monday night against the Broncos. Not as if Ken Dorsey was the one that had 
too many guys on the field for the field goal try, but it's a different issue. Somebody had to take the fall for that, and it was Ken Dorsey. With Joe Brady, Stephon Diggs was used less and less. He had three catches for 21 yards in the AFC division round loss to the Chiefs. He hadn't had a 100-yard game since week six. He was a luxury they no longer could afford. He was a luxury they no longer needed. And the question is, how much of a luxury is he even at this point? The Texans are going to find out. And the Texans presumably see something in Stephon Diggs that they believe will make a difference for their team as they enjoy the early years with C.J. Stroud. These are the years to spend money on other positions. These are the years to go all in. You know, there's another team in Texas that's been talking about going all in. The Texans are far more all in this year than the Cowboys. And the Texans, they did better last year than the Cowboys. In the weekend that the Cowboys were getting blown out, sir, at home by the Packers, the Texans were the ones doing some blowing out of the Browns at home and advanced. So the Texans arrow pointing up, the Texans doing what they have to do to address areas where they think they need to get better and spend that money and use that cap space in the years that C.J. Stroud is in a slotted rookie contract. Yes, he was the second overall pick. It's still a lot less than what he's going to make, especially based on how he played last year. C.J. Stroud is going to be in line for a franchise quarterback contract for now. Stephon Diggs comes in, and we'll see what he can do to elevate that offense. So this is intriguing for a Texans team that is ready to push the chips in the middle of the table. Sims and I were trying to figure out where would Diggs want to go. Chiefs would be the first and most obvious de destination. And when we consider the terms of this trade, it's Diggs plus, plus, I want to make sure I get this right, a 2024 fifth round pick, a 2025 sixth round pick. Those three things go to the Texans for a 2025 second round pick that came from the Vikings as part of that deal that was recently done to give the Vikings a second first rounder in this year's draft. So the Bills get a second round pick, but they give up digs, a fifth round pick this year and a sixth round pick next year and take 31 million in dead money. They created $17 million in cap space with the Josh Allen restructuring. They did a lot of other slashing and burning of salary cap space to get under the $255.4 million limit. They were in desperate cap space before the league year began. Now they're in a position where they're taking on this $31 million. And let's look at their depth chart now. Khalil Shakir last year kind of stepped up and became the guy instead of Gabe Davis. Justin Shorter is listed as a starter. Mac Hollins, Tyrell Shavers, KJ Hamler, Andy Isabella, Brian Thompson. That's the rest of it right now on the depth chart. So they got some work to do. They got some work to do maybe in the draft. See, this is why you'd ideally want to delay this until after the draft, because now there's going to be a glaring red light in Buffalo. We're looking for a receiver. We're looking for receivers. So anybody that's drafting after them, as the bills are trickling closer to being on the clock, let's try to jump over the bills because maybe they're going to take a receiver. Maybe we'll take the one that we think they want. I really do think in the grand scheme of things, they would have preferred to wait until after June 1. But you know what happens? You find out. Look, the league meetings were last week. This was the opportunity for the bills to discreetly find out who would want Stephon Diggs, what they could get for him, and when they could get it done. And I guarantee you part of the conversation was we'd really like to wait until after June 1 to do this. Well, we want him now. Well, we'd like to wait. Well, we want him now. If you want to do this deal, you're doing it now. And at the end of the day, they get a second rounder in the future, plus they have to give up a five this year and a six next year for a guy they gave up a first round pick to get from the Vikings. That first round pick became Justin Jefferson. So that worked out for the Vikings, although they're still trying to figure out what the long-term future of Justin Jefferson is, the Diggs short-term future is Houston. It's not a surprise. It really isn't. When you consider the way things have gone in Buffalo, Diggs intensely competitive 
And even though you can argue the window's open still, it feels like it's a challenge for the Bills to get to where they want to be. And I think Diggs looks at it and says, all right, between the Texans and the Bills, which of these two teams is more likely to challenge and defeat the Kansas City Chiefs? And I suspect that Diggs, who wants to win, desperately wants to get his hands on a trophy, he regards himself as having a better opportunity with the Houston Texans. We'll see. Makes for a spicier 2024 season now that the Houston Texans have Stephon Diggs. And just out of curiosity, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multitask. This is one of the things I always do when we have a trade like this. Let's see who the Texans play this year. I assume they play the Bills, right? They both won their divisions, right? There will be a Bills game, right? Here we go. 2024 opponents. At home, Buffalo Bills. At home, Baltimore Ravens. At home, Miami Dolphins, Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, and then the Colts, Jaguars, and Titans. On the road, they play the Cowboys. Ooh. They play the Packers. Ooh. They play the Vikings. They're at Kansas City. Hey, they got a tough schedule this year. Tough schedule. So we'll see the Bills come to town. We'll see them go to Kansas City. It could be the first game of the season. Texans at the Chiefs, just like it was four years ago after the Chiefs won the Super Bowl and were hosting the game to start the season. So, interesting times. An unexpected twist 22 days before the draft that shakes up the AFC and gives the Texans a weapon that potentially puts them in a position to challenge the Chiefs and puts the Bills in a position where we're wondering what comes next. But this could be addition by subtraction, even though some would say that doesn't exist. Sometimes it does. And maybe Stephon Diggs had become overall someone that the Bills decided, all things considered, were better off moving on and taking a $31 million dead cap charge in lieu of keeping him on the team for 2024. That's it for this special and unexpected edition of PFTPM. Who knows? The day's still young. Maybe some other crazy stuff is going to happen today. If it does, I'll be back. Thanks, as always, for some of your time, and have a great Wednesday. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.